Hello, everyone, and welcome. On behalf of the MixTech team, I would like to thank you for joining us today. Today, we will be going over module seven of our Data Beyond the Tip of the Iceberg series. And the title of today's session is the Data Matrix Supervision. Um, today, we have Dr. Um, Tony Salerno, who's going to be taking us through today's module. I'll turn it over to Tony. Thanks very much, Ashley, and welcome, everyone. Uh, it really is a pleasure for me to begin to address some of these critical issues related to supervision. Uh, I think there's increasing understanding that the role of supervisors is not just a nice thing, but really critical uh, to improve quality in the service system. And today's focus is really gonna be on uh, the area of, of you know, data and the data matrix kind of you know, indicators and uh, how supervision really plays into it. So let's get started. Uh, the agenda for today is uh, basically to, to really think about decision-making because ultimately, a lot of data, that's what it guides, is like decision-making. And in the absence of data, people are left with all sorts of ways of making decisions. I wanna share that with you. And then the program management role, you know, in many ways, supervisors have both program management role as well as direct uh, supervision uh, of various reports, right, the supervisees. Uh, I'm gonna also share some examples, and then we'll talk a little bit about uh, the upcoming modules that are gonna be available to you. So just to remind folks, you know, about the, uh, you know, the matrix and the, the area in yellow is really what's going to be our focus today. And this is sort of a reminder, the sort of the critical areas in an organization include the financial, the human resourcing and, and the staffing and quality compliance, uh, really an understanding of the population, you know, served. That's so critical around quality and, and, out, and outcomes, of course, which is sometimes the most the most challenging areas for uh, organizations. So let's let's just think about it. Uh, like why why is data like so important, right? And in the absence of it, if you have, just don't have it, well, how are supervisors going to make some decisions? And this is how this is how supervisors make decisions. I've been a, in the field for a very long time, probably I estimated almost forty five years. And um, you know dur during that time, I've had to make tons of decisions, outpatient, inpatient programs. I was a high school teacher and a guidance counselor, you know, in any role that we have and that you have, right, we have to make decisions. So if you don't have data to guide some of that, then what are you left with? Well, you can ask people who you trust. You can go to consultants and, and experts. Sometimes you go to the literature, maybe science, uh, maybe the issue that I'm, I'm uh, struggling with or that I need to make a decision about is somehow people have addressed this in a more scientific way. Well, maybe I just basically, like, what do I remember from my training and maybe some teachers, or professors, maybe that'll help me to make a decision. Um, what we've been doing that seems okay. So it's the idea like, listen, uh, to reflect on how we currently operate and if it's not causing problems, uh, I guess that's one way of making decisions that's gonna kind of keep things the way they are and, uh, and keep me out of trouble. Uh, what I think my team members will accept, well, that's another in the, in, uh, sort of consideration like, well, I got whatever decision I make, uh, let me just figure out something that team members are going to accept so I don't have the hassle. Uh, what I think my boss wants to hear, well, that's a big one, right? Uh, asking friends or, of, or family or find out what my counterparts are doing, you know, my supervisor in that other program or in another agency uh, or attending uh, webinars like this. Maybe I'll, uh, you know, learn something through it. So if this is really all about making informed decisions. So what does a uh, supervisor need to do uh, in their job in order to do their job really at a high level? Well, there's like a couple of you know, key roles, right? The key role as supervisor of a program. Uh, and I've been, a, I've run a day, day hospital and I've been a director of rehab services and I've run other programs, clinics, that kind of thing. And I have people that I supervise, right? But in addition to the people I supervise, the second point, I also had of a program to run. And there were some indicators uh, of what would, it, what would uh, demonstrate that the program is really running at a, at a high level of quality. Um, and, and you need data to assess the overall quality of a program. Uh, and then there's my role in my team members. And I've had any, anywhere from about eight to nine people who would direct reports to me when I was in a large psych hospital. So, um, and my responsibility was a direct supervision of these folks so that they performed at a high level of quality as well. And I needed data 
to assess the performance of each individual service provider. To be very honest with you, in my various roles, I had very, very, very little organized data to make uh, a lot of informed decisions. And, and maybe many folks feel that way, that we have to kind of make those decisions based on other factors rather than being able to point uh, to some really reliable and important data to guide decisions. And, and that really does kick us up to another level. And the whole matrix uh, and all those various components in the cells of the matrix, that those are all in the service of improving quality and outcomes. So uh, the high performance team, this is like really important. You're not gonna get to a very high level of performance in the absence of using data. So if the supervisors are to facilitate the development of these high performance teams, well, you, you really need to develop a team that has five characteristics. And this is in the literature. And if you're familiar with Patrick Lencioni's work on uh, where teams really like mess up, you know, these dysfunctions of teams. Well, th the reality is, and in a lot of his work and, and others is uh, you really need like sort of five critical factors that are associated with high performance teams uh, from trust to productive conflict to uh, commitment to the work people holding themselves and others accountable. And the last one is attention to results. And that's sort of a critical thing. If you don't pay attention to results and you're gonna need data in order to uh, answer a question, how are we really doing? Both in our program as a whole and also how individual practitioners, <clears throat> and, et cetera, are, uh, are performing. So attention to results is a critical component of any high performance team. And this is one way of kind of um, illustrating what I've, what I've just described, everywhere from really the, the foundation of honesty and trust and, and moving all the way up to attending to results. Accountability is also something. In holding people accountable, uh, it's important to have data uh, you know, as well, uh, to have productive and respectful conflict. Uh, what's most respectful is when People are not just making you know, judgments out of the air, but are actually being able to refer to data in order to um, you know, make a particular argument uh, and share a perspective rather than it's just some sort of opinion that's just floating out there. Uh, it's, it's really based on as much information as possible. So um, high performance team have access to, uh, to and utilize reliable data. Uh, and you ask yourself, these are kind of questions that you can be asking yourself uh, right now. Uh, have we identified the type of data that a supervisor and team members need so that they can do their job? Do we have data about each person's contribution to the accomplishment of the, the mission and really the, the aims of the particular program or service? Do we regularly review our goals and progress in a way that's specific and measurable? Or is it just more anecdotal and impressionistic? Uh, as opposed to like, we can really answer a uh, you know, question. You know, when I was asked uh, often about how my day hospital was going, this is back in 1980s. Uh, and if you, you asked me, well, Tony, how is it all going? Well, you know what I would say to you? I'd say, well, look, it's really going well. And they asked, well, how do you know? I said, well, nothing bad's happened in the last two weeks. And in many ways, sometimes the data that uh, comes really to the top is that uh, the absence of, of negative experiences which makes perfect sense because those negative experiences can occupy you know, so much of your time. And it's an indicator of like risk and safety. And those are really critical factors. But we really need to go beyond that if we're going to demonstrate that our programs have a lot high level of value and uh, of quality. Can we even keep track of critically important outcomes? Do we, uh, do we express dissatisfaction with data that falls short, right? So that the data will kind of, hey, this is, this is something you have to attend to. In other words, it helps to identify really blind spots, shortcomings, uh, problems, limitations, uh, poor performance. So that's another important part of, uh, of having reliable data. And do team members discuss performance data that they are really concerned about? So you can just see a high performance team being able to make reference to like some really important information that is a, a clear indicator of how the program is doing and how each individual practitioner is doing, which is really a critical piece here. So uh, data used by supervisors are what the agency needs to monitor 
Here's an example of productivity. If you look in the matrix, that's an important piece. And what a supervisor, a supervisor needs to monitor, each supervisee. So if the team leader doesn't attend to agency-wide and supervisee-specific performance, it kind of communicates that that ah, doesn't really matter that much. You know, as long as we can kind of get through the day with anything, nothing bad happening, most of the clients are showing up, most of the staff is showing up, no one seems to be getting into any trouble, well, then we're fine. So it really becomes difficult to hold people accountable uh, if you don't really have some direct data. So what kind of data do supervisors need to do their job? So at the program oversight role, uh, access to and review of certain data. And you can see this is also part of the matrix as well, you know, product, productivity, uh, outcomes, the, uh, really understanding our population. Um, we have also, uh, I guess I have outcomes a couple of times there, some additional important uh, you know, outcomes, uh, quality of compliance, and human resources. So these are all the type of data that folks have. And you can ask yourself, well, gee, uh, if you're a supervisor listening to this, do you have this, any a part of this? If you're at leadership levels who could supply supervisors, uh, is this something that you can make uh, accessible to supervisors? And for organizing multiple programs, you can actually look at some benchmarking uh, you know, issues as well. So uh, you can also think about uh, you know, how you represent data, right? You know, how to display data. This is just some examples. So if you wanted to, let's say, look, one of the issues we wanna know is when we look at our clients, if we do surveys, which many organizations do, uh, that we kind of take a look at key indicators. Now, these are just examples, safety and comfort and friendliness, accessibility, choice and involvement. So um, if you have something like this, then a team is in a position to say, gee, uh, what's going on here? It looks like our clients are really low in their sense of their involvement in their own care. Um, and so we need to really take a look at that. And then friendliness, well, that, you know, sometimes it's hard to quantify that, but in our survey, what we're hearing from our clients is that they don't feel the environment is all that welcoming and people aren't all that nice to them. And that, again, it just, it doesn't give you all the answers. It, it helps you to identify areas uh, where uh, quality could be addressed. And, and again, that's another important contribution of data. Uh, another example, just to kind of give, share this with you. Uh, if you have a, a multi-service agencies with many different programs, most of the time in, in, in New York you know, and elsewhere, you know, people aren't really able to benchmark. Like it isn't like my program, my agency, I know how we're doing with outcomes and let's look at another agency. I, I have some colleagues who work out in um, agencies in Utah. And this actually was some data that I extracted from and used for the, our purpose, but this is actual data. And these were like centers, uh, behavioral health centers in Utah, and they all use the same outcome measure. And in, by doing that, they're able to kind of compare, right, you know, each other to each other, right? Uh, that you have benchmarking and you can kind of see where performance in some agencies. Now, if I was in the lower, if I was running uh, the center, uh, which is center two, that's got the lowest scores. Well, let me tell you something that would activate me. I'd like to know what it is that uh, others like Weber is doing uh, that they're doing so well. Uh, in, uh, in, in terms of outcome, and we're all using the same outcome measure. That is another level of the use of data that drives decision-making and also provides such important information to, uh, to the leadership, including uh, supervisors, of how we doing, uh, also in comparison to other similar organizations. You know, that could be a wonderful opportunity for quality improvement, which is an area I'm gonna address in a subsequent, uh, subsequent webinar. This is just an example of the, actually this is the questionnaire that's used uh, in uh, some, some agencies and sometimes a statewide like Utah would use um, sort of uh, these instruments and measuring tools. Again, that gets applied to everyone. And it, it, it really uh, covers um, many, many different areas. It gives you a, a general sense of how a particular client is doing, a really independent of the particular clinical difficulty that brought them into treatment. Again, it gives you an, it's an indicator and it's something that's applicable across uh, clinical conditions, uh, across various settings uh, of treatment, uh, uh, really across cultural populations. So it's kind of an interesting thing that takes place really very rarely. 
uh, but as internally, an organization uh, can use, well, not necessarily this outcome measure, but any type of standardized measure that would answer an important question and give you a sense of who's really moving forward, improving uh, you know, their day-to-day -day functioning, improving uh, their, their sense of some satisfaction and success in their lives, which is ultimately the important goals that we have. Now, data really helps supervisors in holding supervisees accountable. Now, I really want to speak to this because this is a really difficult thing. We, you know, we're just by doing a, um, a webinar on uh, <clears throat> having those hard conversations when you have to address employee performance issues uh, and holding em employee supervisees accountable. Well, what, what really is incredibly helpful to a supervisor is if they actually if they have actual data and not just, well, I, I, my impression, I heard you say this, uh, you, you, the way you approached it wasn't helpful. You know, you got these, which isn't, not that it isn't important that my um, subjective perception uh, of, of an employee's performance, uh, and I need to have a conversation about that with a supervisee. But when you have data, now that makes, takes it to a whole other level, right? Making a distinction between what are facts, really hard data and my impressions or my perceptions or my feelings or my beliefs. You can get to a lot of trouble if you're dealing with issues of accountability and it's based upon uh, your perceptions, feelings or beliefs. Uh, they're important, but they're subjective. Hard data is really difficult to refute and to dismiss. And I have to tell you with the people that I supervised, I did not have any. I had no supervised these specific. I mean, I wasn't tracking when people were taking off or who coming in late. And, you know, you get an impression that maybe it doesn't seem right, <laughs> but uh, that's a very different place than, um, I'm sorry about that. Okay, so what kind of data? Foundational, attendance, timeliness, day off, Productivity of each practitioner, satisfa staff satisfaction, survey results, rate of missed appointments by practitioners, like whose clients are dropping out at a much higher rate, uh, documentation issue, complaints that you hear about uh, particular practitioners. And this is a Cola Pareto chart, and it's simply a, a way of looking at various uh, performance indicators for a supervisee, uh, and then kind of seeing where they all like fall. So you can see me, Tony, I'm doing the best. Um, or no, actually I'm not because in some things I'd be doing the best, but in other things I wouldn't be doing the best. But this kind of gives you a sense of how people compare to each other. This is just a survey, patient satisfaction survey by practitioner. Just to give you an example, uh, I think this is proprietary, uh, but it just gives you an example um, and that you may want to extract some of these and develop your own kind of patient satisfaction by practitioner. That's a different level than you have aggregate across all the programs and the services that you have. And at this point, I'm just gonna turn it back over to Ashley, uh, who will uh, share about some of our next modules. And thanks so much everyone for listening. I uh, really appreciate it. And I, I hope that there were some ideas that came out of this would be useful to you. Okay, thank you very much. Great, thank you so much, Tony. And thank you again, everyone. Um, so just as a quick recap, right? At the, so at this point, we've gone through the data matrix at the leadership and agency level. We went over it at the program management level and Tony just discussed it at the supervision level. So really our next module is going to be specific to the data matrix regarding the different um, data elements that staff um, need to know. So we hope you tune in for that. Next slide, please. And again, as always, um, if you have any questions or any feedback, we would love to hear from you. Um, we ask that you please send your questions or comments to the email address li listed on this screen, which is nictac.info at nyu.edu. Uh, thank you so much and hope everyone has a good rest of your day. Talk to you next time.